My name is Pete Oakley. I'm the co-founder and president of Become Worth Following Leadership Solutions. Yeah, I think that to a great extent, leadership is very misunderstood. I think that uh, people think that in order to be a leader, you have to be the president of something or the manager or a supervisor or a captain or something along those lines. Um, I think that the moment that you decide that there's something that absolutely has to be done, but it's too much for you to do alone, that's when you have to start enlisting the help of other people and that's the moment that you become a leader. Yeah, you can definitely develop leaders. Now, understand that some people are, are a little more natural and sometimes that has to do with upbringing or experiences that they've had. Uh, so they may not need quite as much work at it. Um, some people really just don't care um, and, and those people probably are never going to develop as leaders, but we know that everyone can develop in terms of being more influential on their team. Um, that said, I, I think that there are steps to it and you, you can't skip those steps. You know, for example, like I, I really believe that you have to lead yourself first. If you're going to be influential, you have to be the kind of people, the kind of person that other people looks at and says, wow, that person has a really good core. That person is worth following. Wherever they're going, I'll go there. And, and when you get to that point, if you, if you have the skills of a leader, in other words, you know how to plan, you know how to communicate and all those things, but once you have a good core, now you have planning ability and, and the ability to serve and you understand what that means to serve and you're a good communicator and you're really good at building relationships, well now you're a really effective leader. And I think that if you, if you really want to be on top of your game and you really want your team to finish high, then you have to figure out ways of leveraging the other leaders in your group and that's what we call leading leaders. So I don't think you can skip any steps, I think you have to first develop yourself, lead yourself, then learn to lead others, then learn to lead leaders. There are four things that you have to understand. You, you can't create a leadership development program that has too large of a context. It's got to be a very focused context. What are you trying to actually work on right now? How are you trying to develop these people right now? Or help them develop themselves is really a better way of saying it. That's how we look at it. It's not about us developing them. It's about us guiding them through their own development process. And that's a really tricky thing. Um, the second thing is that the development process has to be coupled to actual leading work that the individual is doing. Because if it's not, um, they're not going to get the experience and they're not going to learn what works and what doesn't, and especially what works and what doesn't in their realm and for them. And the third thing that a lot of programs just kind of skip is, is they don't really work on some of the underlying mindsets that that these people have, everybody has, and myself included, everybody has these sort of underlying mindsets that are like our limiting beliefs and they, they slow us down a little bit and they make it difficult for us to do certain things. And if you can sort of work on those and, and help figure out where those things are limiting you, you can make a lot of progress really quick. And then the last thing that a leadership development program has to do is it has to measure results. Like, are they actually becoming a better leader? And so, so our programs are effective because they really take into account those four things, context, coupling, underlying mindsets, and, uh, and measuring results. Core strength program, um, leading yourself, we call that. Um, we, we know that there are four main components to being an effective influencer in your realm, whatever that realm may be. And um, probably the most crucial is self-awareness. And that's all kinds of things like knowing your values, understanding how you process emotions, how you go through your work day, how you talk to yourself, those kinds of things. Those are th all things that are self-awareness. So we talk about being mentally tough and, and having, in you know, so part of mental toughness is like having integrity, having self-discipline, you know, and, and you got to be ready for those times when, when challenges arise and how you handle those challenges, you have to be mentally tough. Um, we talk about being enthusiastic, you know, having a lot of energy, um, understanding your vision, understanding your purpose very clearly. And if you do that, people look at you and go, yeah, that's the kind of person I want to follow. And then, of course, I think that there's also an element of competence. And, and that is, of course, being competent is a never-ending like, journey. You're always trying to become more competent. And when people see that in you, 
then they look at you and I, you know, the truth is when people see all four of those things in you, that's when they look at you and say, yeah, that's the kind of person that I think is worth following. Once you've, once you've developed your core, then people sort of look at you as like a natural leader. And, and at that point, you're really just sort of leading by influence or I guess leading by example. But as you develop these other traits that are, that are common and very effective leaders, like um, we, we move on to what we call the team strength program. And, and that's more things like planning and understanding the crucial parts of planning and strategizing for your team. What is it you're trying to get done? What are your goals? What are your plans? What are your actions? How do you reflect and adjust? And then there's communication. And it's not just communication with your words and emails. It's also communication with your facial expression, with your body language. Like, how are you communicating with the people around you? There's a lot to understand there if you're going to really be influential. And then the, the, the big one we think of is, is your ability to build relationships, to build trust, to make people feel safe around you, safe enough to tell you, yes, we're on track or no, we're not on track. That's a big part of leading others. And then the most complicated one, I think, for a lot of people is, especially people who are kind of like prone to want to be good leaders, is the idea that a leader really is a servant. They serve a very special role on a team, but it's not like they're the most important member of the team. I mean, leaders, leaders are really good at one thing, and that is influencing the direction of a group, but the group actually takes you there. That's leading others. Right, absolutely. There's core strength and team strength, right? Lead yourself and lead others. Um, I think that once you're there, you kind of realize that if you really want the organization to reach new heights, you, you, if you really want to, I guess, exponentially see improvement, um, you have to learn how to leverage the people who could potentially be leaders within your team. And that takes a little bit of extra work. I mean, you have to teach them things like, I got a little list here, like how to resolve conflicts and how to critically think through issues and problems and opportunities. Um, how to manage time, how to help people manage time. Um, you know, simple things too, like how to run effective meetings. Um, how to just, you know, how to plan a staff development. You know, those are the kinds of things that we deal with in the whole leadership. We call it whole, W-H-O-L-E, whole leadership. And, and we also kind of, our joke is like, like it's whole, like the whole leader, but it's also what are the holes in your leadership ability and we can help you sort of fill those holes. And that's our, that's our like organizational strength. So if it goes core strength, team strength, organizational strength, our organizational strength, lead leaders. It, Absolutely. We do, we do other things too. We do workshops and talks and seminars. Um, but our big training is the core strength, you know, team strength, and our organizational strength, our whole leadership program. But we do like one day workshops and things like that where we'll, we have a special take on goal setting. Like we, we actually don't believe in goal setting. We believe in goal reaching. So we have a little thing we call GPA, rah, 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 which stands for goal, plan, action, reflect, adjust, reflect, adjust, reflect, adjust. We expose you to really interesting ideas like Tom Kite's idea with no blaming, complaining, and defending. Um, this whole concept of fill your cup, what's, what's down, in the, down in the well comes up in the bucket. So how do you, how do you fill your well with things that are going to you know, be really, that when they spill over are going to be really positive and influential on people. We do things on values and how to help people with their values. We do things on self-talk. Um, we teach people how to build their own leadership program if that's what if that's what they want. We have a two-day clarity workshop that gets down to the root of what it is you're trying to accomplish and, and just strips away all the non-essential things that are going on in your life and in your business and in your, on your team and you just get rid of the garbage and you just stay very, very focused on things. So those are some of the other things, you know, the workshops and the talks and seminars. Yeah, I think a lot of people understand the basics of success, you know, like you put in one unit of energy and you get one unit of output. You put in one unit of energy, you get another unit of output. And so you can see slow growth if you just do nothing but work on your own core and your own abilities. Um, I think that when you want to see faster growth and you start learning how to lead other people around you, um, I think you see much faster growth. It's like 
one unit of energy equals five units of output, and one more unit of energy equals five more units of output, something like that. But you know, when you really become a, a competent leader and you learn how to lead the leaders within your organization, that's when you see that geometric curve and it's like one unit of energy equals a thousand units of output or something, something along those lines, and depending on how organized it is. So I think obviously leadership is the most important thing you can focus on. And as you do that, you're gonna see things that are just amazing in your, on your team. I, I just know that the way to pursue excellence is to develop leadership on your team. And you know, when you do that, the sky's, the sky's not even the limit. There probably is no limit.